Whiplash Associated Disorders, WAD. The not so simple, simple soft tissue injury. What it all means to people who have whiplash injuries from an automobile accident. If you are like most people, you probably have no idea about the associated injuries that commonly occur as the result of an auto accident, whiplash. Myth number one, whiplash is a simple muscle strain. After an accident, it's easy to see the damage to your car, but what about what's happening inside your body? If the metal in your car is all bent and twisted, what do you think your spine, muscles, and even your nerves look like after an accident? Your car is easy to fix, just bolt on new parts and away you go. Repairing your body, however, is a different story. Don't be fooled by your insurance agent, the adjuster and, especially, the insurance company attorney's dirty tricks. You may have been a customer for years. Your insurance agent may even be a family member or a friend, but your relationship changes as soon as you are in an accident and the insurance company's attorney gets involved. You owe it to yourself to learn the facts about whiplash and its associated disorders that commonly develop after a car crash. Probably the biggest myth, if not an outright lie, about whiplash and its associated auto accident injuries is that they are simple muscle strains that will go away in a week or two, even without treatment. This is not only a myth, but it is dangerous misinformation that can lead to lifelong pain and suffering. If there is one thing I want you to take away from this public service announcement, it is the facts about car accident injuries. In this video, we will discuss the latest scientific research findings concerning whiplash and its associated injuries. Being informed and knowing the facts might just change your life. Whiplash-associated injuries can last a long time. Consider this study that reported that 88% of auto accident patients continued to have significant pain even after a two-year follow-up evaluation. What happens if you check on whiplash victims after two years? Unfortunately, according to this study, conducted by the Cervical Spine Research Society, shows that after an accident, the damage to your body may last a long time. Researchers found that about one in two people may continue to suffer from pain even 17 years after an accident. But the whiplash-associated symptoms will eventually go away, right? Well, another study reported that whiplash-associated disorders commonly persist, even after the best medical treatments are utilized. This study, published in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery, followed a group of whiplash victims for 30 years. That is a really long-term follow-up period. What the researchers found was a little frightening. Only about half of people involved in a motor vehicle accident fully recovered even after three decades. Whiplash-associated disorders are real. Soft tissue injuries are not simple. More troubling, still, are the studies which show that whiplash victims are at increased risk for developing future health problems. Consider this study, published in the Journal of Clinical Epidemiology, which reported whiplash patients had a 300% greater chance of developing associated future neck and shoulder pain compared to people who have never experienced a whiplash injury. Additionally, according to the study, those patients who had a whiplash injury were 160 to 370 percent more at risk for associated headache, thoracic and low back pain, as well as for fatigue, sleep disturbances and even generalized ill health.
A large number of our whiplash patients complain of associated dizziness or lightheadedness after their auto accident. Researchers report that malfunctioning of the inner ear, known as the vestibular system, is a common finding following a car crash. Lightheadedness following a car crash can be a sign of damage to the vestibular system or even mild traumatic brain injury. A little later in this video, we'll demonstrate a clinical test we do for our patients that screens for whiplash-associated brain or vestibular disorders related to their motor vehicle accident. Because seeing is believing. Using a sophisticated test called a VNG, researchers commonly found evidence of abnormal vestibular function associated with injuries of the soft tissues of the neck, secondary to whiplash trauma. According to these researchers, their findings suggest that a vestibular function examination is important for properly identifying patients suffering from whiplash trauma. Vestibular function testing also helps to characterize the severity of the injury and may even aid in predicting the prognosis for recovery from whiplash-associated disorders. What does this mean for you? Well, simply put, if no one checked your vestibular function since your accident, you may be at risk for delayed, incomplete, or poor recovery from your injuries. Vestibular testing is not hard to do and can be done right in the office. According to this study, balance testing can be used to assess and more importantly confirm vestibular malfunction in individuals that is an associated symptom of a whiplash injury. Did your accident affect your vestibular system? You can't tell unless you check it. Treating a whiplash injury as a simple muscle strain and failing to assess its associated vestibular and nervous system symptoms does a tremendous disservice to people injured in an auto accident. Failure to diagnose these common but hidden injuries may help to explain why the long-term recovery rate from whiplash is only about 50%. Did you know that along with the vestibular system, researchers also report harmful changes in the spinal cord and even the brain after a whiplash injury? Let's see what the studies have found. Chronic widespread pain is a condition similar to fibromyalgia that often occurs after a whiplash injury. We commonly see spreading of pain in our MVA patients. Insurance adjusters often accuse whiplash victims of embellishing their injuries. But there is a legitimate reason why whiplash pain can spread. This study documents that widespread pain in chronic whiplash injury is associated with hypersensitivity outside the primary pain area. This indicates abnormal pain processing within the brain or spinal cord, or what is known as central sensitization. Another study also demonstrates the existence of chronic widespread pain in whiplash victims. It found hypersensitivity even over uninjured areas of the body in response to mild stimulation of the soft tissues. It confirms that harmful brain and spinal cord mechanisms are responsible for ongoing and evolving pain in whiplash patients. This explains why MBA patients frequently develop new or spreading complaints. What's more is the fact that MRI scans and EMG studies are incapable of documenting this central sensitization phenomena. They are typically normal in these patients. These findings have important therapeutic and prognostic implications. Really? A brain injury after a whiplash, are we going too far? Consider this study that suggests that as many as 45% of all reported concussions or mild traumatic brain injuries can be attributed to motor vehicle collisions. Yet most doctors and virtually all insurance adjusters insist that whiplash is a simple muscle injury. What are they missing?
It is true that many of the symptoms of neck injury and MTBI overlap. The results of this study suggest that many patients with mild brain injury and those with whiplash-associated cervical spine injuries present with similar, almost indistinguishable impairments, signs, and symptoms. To find hidden whiplash-associated mild brain injuries, you need to look for hidden whiplash-associated brain injuries. According to this study, even emergency room physicians commonly miss mild traumatic brain injuries following car accidents. Patients presenting to the emergency room following a car crash frequently have an MTBI. Patients whose diagnosis of MTBI was missed end up with significantly more severe post-concussion symptoms. So, how do we screen for vestibular and brain injuries? Let me show you. A simple balance assessment can screen the vestibular system and when abnormal, can suggest mild traumatic brain injury after a whiplash injury. Watch what happens to the patient's balance when her brain and vestibular system is challenged. Before this test she had no idea that her ongoing whiplash symptoms had a brain injury component. As part of a comprehensive assessment, balance testing can uncover whiplash-associated injury to the vestibular system and mild traumatic brain injuries. Soft tissue injuries following an MVA are often not simple muscle strains. This video is included with the patient's written consent. Okay, then you can close your eyes there, Lex. See what happens. You're not touching the wall, are you? Mm -mm. Okay, so bring the feet in about halfway. Then close your eyes. Now bring them so that the feet are together completely. And then close your eyes. A little harder. Okay. So open your eyes, turn your head to the wall and tilt your ear down, then close your eyes. And then open your eyes, turn your head to the other side and tilt your ear down like you're trying to get water out of it. And close your eyes. Okay, see how you wobble oh, a little bit? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Alright, so now let's how about stepping down? What are the implications for the whiplash patient? This study shows that, five years after a whiplash injury, patients continued to report whiplash-associated symptoms that are typical of mild traumatic brain injury. Furthermore, this study emphasizes the possibility of screening patients with chronic WAD for these symptoms as a complement to the assessment. Untreated whiplash-associated symptoms may negatively affect the outcome of pain rehabilitation. Proving that, if you don't look for whiplash-associated disorders, you won't find them and if you don't document them, they don't exist. Myth number two, you can't get whiplash injuries in a low-speed fender bender. Many insurance adjusters will try to minimize your injuries, stating that your accident was a low-speed fender bender, defined as under 8 miles per hour. They'll suggest that there was minimal damage to your car, therefore you must be exaggerating your injuries. To avoid being denied proper treatment and the risk of long-term pain, your attorney and your doctor should be familiar with the next two studies we are about to discuss. The first study we are going to discuss was published in the journal, Spine. It was conducted by a group of consultants, like the ones commonly hired by insurance companies to try to minimize the severity of whiplash-associated injuries. It is important to note that a number of the authors of this study were also participants in the simulated crash tests. So this can potentially lead to self-serving bias. If you were involved in a low-speed collision, this study will likely be used against you. So let's take a look at it and see how you can protect yourself from it.
The purpose of the study was to compare data from studies that recruited low-speed collision volunteers to real-world data of whiplash injuries reported to the National Automotive Sampling System Database, NASS. Make no mistake about it, the real purpose of the study was an attempt to show that whiplash injuries and thus claim settlements could be reduced to mathematical calculations and statistics. With the elimination of the human component. The study found that for low speed impacts, 21% of crash test volunteers sustained neck strain. This finding was comparable to real world data derived from the National Automotive Sampling System database. Remember this database, NASS, it will be important later. Taking these findings at face value, they show one in five individuals exposed to a low speed crash will develop whiplash symptoms. Or stated another way, about two people on every jury panel would sustain similar injuries if they were in the car with you during the collision. Based on these results, the researchers concluded that there is no reporting bias by the crash test volunteers, some of whom were the authors of this article. And thus, by extension, the severity of whiplash injuries can be calculated mathematically. So, can injury severity be reduced to a mathematical equation? Let's look at another, more recent study. Cervical spine injury data were accessed, analyzed, and compared from three national databases. The National Automotive Sampling System Crashworthiness Data System, NASS, which was used in the previous study we discussed, the Nationwide Emergency Department Sample, NEDS, and the Nationwide Inpatient Sample, NIS, which represent two additional, real-world, whiplash injury databases. Let's see how the results compare to the previous study. A comparison of the three real-world injury databases revealed the NASS database underestimated cervical disc injuries, which were reported at a rate 88% lower than in the NEDS database. Furthermore, the National Insurance Claim Data, which include cases of cervical disc injury diagnosed both in and outside of the emergency room, indicates that the NEDS database likely undercounts cervical disc injuries by 92%. When taken together, this means that the NASS data undercounts these injuries by 99% or more, suggesting that four people on a jury, not two, could expect to be injured if exposed to a low-speed collision. Conclusions Because of a limited sample size, and restrictive criteria for both crash and injury inclusion, the NASS database cannot be used to estimate the number of crash-related spinal injuries of any type or severity in the USA. The study further demonstrates that the most inappropriate use of the NASS database is for estimating the number of spinal injuries resulting from low-speed rear impact collisions. Due to the fact that the NASS samples fewer than 1 in 100,000 cases of cervical spine injuries of any type occurring in low-speed rear impact collisions. In another study, 77% of reviewed cases involved a claim of whiplash-associated lower back pain. Of these lower back pain claim cases, 70% of cases involved a rear-end collisions and 40% of all cases were low-velocity collisions, with speeds ranging between 10 and 12 km per hour. The most common pre-existing medical condition was prior LBP or evidence of disc degeneration. Note, 12 km per hour is approximately equal to 7.5 miles per hour. Clearly people, not statistics, get injured in automobile accidents. Even the authors of the original study we discussed begrudgingly admit that individual patient characteristics matter. Quote, the pre-impact screening of volunteers was not always addressed and when it was, 
there was only a brief discussion. Therefore, the health of the volunteers before the testing is not known at all, or to a limited extent for most of the volunteers. End quote. Let's see which individual patient characteristic are important, according to the scientific research. Myth number three, you can calculate injury based on crash data, ignoring human risk factors. Does your doctor know the risk factors for developing chronic whiplash-associated disorders? More importantly, are they clearly stated in your medical records? It is important. Are you a little overweight? It can contribute to delayed recovery from whiplash. This study evaluated the influence of body mass index on muscle pain. Up to one year after whiplash, obesity was found to be an independent risk factor for worse muscle pain after a motor vehicle collision. Insurance adjusters often try to disqualify whiplash victims who were having pain prior to their car crash. This is the so-called pre-existing condition exclusion. But this study shows that pain pre-existing before the accident is actually a risk factor for delayed recovery rather than a reason to deny your injury claim. According to this study, the whiplash-exposed cohort had significantly increased incidences of pre-collision pain-related diagnoses and medically unexplained symptoms, but not psychiatric diagnoses, which significantly increased odds for neck pain at five-year follow-up. Pre-existing pain is a risk factor for poor recovery. However, it requires skilled documentation on the part of your doctor. Were you having trouble sleeping before your accident? Has your sleep quality deteriorated since the accident? Both are risk factors for complicated and delayed recovery from whiplash. This study found that the prevalence of chronic widespread pain increased in sleep-disturbed whiplash victims. With the presence of sleep disturbances and number of health complaints predicting onset, persistence, and worsening of pain thus demonstrating that sleep disturbances are risk factors for incomplete or delayed recovery from whiplash injury. Another study links poor sleep quality with the development of PTSD and thus complicated recovery following whiplash injury. Consider that pre-MVC nightmares and sleep stress predicted eight-week development of PTSD. So did pre-MVC insomnia predict eight-week PTSD. So we see that sleep disorders predict whiplash complications and thus delayed recovery from MVA injuries. Another study showed a high prevalence of PTSD following a whiplash injury. In this study, the risk of developing PTSD and thus complicated recovery from whiplash was associated with female gender, low socioeconomic status, education and income, and several self-report indicators of MVC severity. Thus, complicating stress and anxiety disorders, delayed recovery, are risk factors associated with female gender, high initial pain scores and lower socioeconomic status. Even the symptom pattern that develops post-whiplash can be an independent risk factor for prolonged recovery. Do you know which ones they are? Grade 2, Neck Complaint and Musculoskeletal Signs Musculoskeletal signs include decreased range of motion and point tenderness, plus muscle findings. Grade 3, Neck Complaint and Neurological Signs Neurological signs include decreased range of motion and point tenderness, plus nerve findings. Well documented, presenting signs and symptoms can predict risk for delayed whiplash recovery.
Statistical analysis in this study showed increased risk of delayed whiplash recovery is associated with Blue Collar Occupation Age, 30 to 50 Quebec Task Force, QTF, Grade 2 or above Higher self-reported injury severity, VAS scores, and Pre-existing cervical spine degenerative disease All indicate an increased risk for poor recovery and chronic symptoms It is amazing that a whiplash injury can even affect your overall health, but that is what the published research has demonstrated. So by now, you should be beginning to realize that anyone who tells you that your whiplash injury is just a muscle strain that will take care of itself clearly does not have your best interests at heart. These studies identify at least nine independent risk factors for complicated recovery from whiplash-associated disorders WAD. When they are well documented in the medical record, they support medical necessity and reasonable care while reducing the need for litigation. They must be documented in your file. Obesity Pre-existing pain Disturbed sleep quality Quebec Task Force Grade 2 and above Blue collar occupation. Age, 30 to 50. Higher self reported injury severity, VAS scores. Pre existing cervical spine degenerative disease. And female gender. Myth number four. Maybe the symptoms will go away. Ongoing symptoms that continue for 12 weeks is the definition of chronic pain. Remember that studies of chronic whiplash show, one in two, patients still had continuing whiplash-associated disorders for 17 to 30 years. So, statistically speaking, if you don't treat your whiplash-associated injuries early and aggressively, those symptoms that persist past 12 weeks have a high probability of becoming permanent and stationary. The clock is ticking. It is never a good idea to delay evaluation and treatment following a car crash. Myth number five. My PCP or family doctor can treat my whiplash. When it comes to properly treating auto accident injuries and whiplash associated disorders, there is simply no substitute for a knowledgeable and experienced doctor, consider our chief of staff, Dr. George Kukrin. Dr. Kukrin served as an expert witness and coach for law students who were participating in the Murray S. Love Moot Court trial competition. The competition has senior law students retry a previously litigated case administered by the Moot Court Board. Senior law students compete in teams of two, delivering opening statements and closing statements, and conducting direct examination and cross-examination of witnesses, including making evidentiary objections, in a mock case. Throughout his career, Dr. Kukrin has treated hundreds of people who have been injured in auto accidents. I'm sure you'll agree that Dr. Kukrin has built an impressive resume. Dr. George Kukrin is a member of the Charter Class of Chiropractic Neurologists, he is board certified in chiropractic neurology and has been practicing chiropractic neurology for more than 20 years. He has been affiliated with a number of postgraduate education departments, including the Carrick Institute and Parker University. His interests are the translation of clinical neuroscience research into novel applications for patient care. He has participated in collaborative research with the University of Wisconsin's Tactile Communication Rehabilitation Laboratory. He peer reviews scientific papers submitted to the Journal of Neuromodulation, Technology at the Neural Interface. The results produced by his pioneering techniques have been presented at international scientific conference symposiums including the International Symposium on Clinical Neuroscience, the Australian Functional Neurology Conference, 
AAFN Symposium, the International Brain Injury Association, 10th World Congress on Brain Injury, the Pannonian Symposium of Central Nervous System Injury, the Peripheral Nerve Society, International Symposium and the Johns Hopkins Medical School. Conference on Integrative Medicine Dr. Kukrin has postgraduate education from Johns Hopkins Medical School, the Mayo Clinic and Harvard Medical Schools. He has graduate education courses in Moscow, Russia and Guadalajara, Mexico. He has authored a textbook on the treatment of peripheral neuropathy and the results from a number of patient cases from his office have been published in journals indexed in the National Library of Medicine. Thank you for your time and attention. This public service announcement was brought to you courtesy of Kukrin Chiropractic, Acupuncture, and Neurology Network. 623-547-4727. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.